Hi everyone, this is Brian from Provision Studios and today we are going to make a video that shows how to set up an analog mixing console on uh, your uh, computer so that it can connect directly to your DAW allowing you to record um, music, uh, live music tracks whether it be a line in instrument like a guitar or bass or miking up uh, a drum kit and or vocalist and recording those directly into your doll whether that's Pro Tools, Logic Pro, Persona Studio One or whatever um, and I'm going to show this on a Macintosh computer uh, that's all that's all I work with so for uh, a Windows video um, you probably would uh, need to download uh, the uh, consoles uh, manual and find out where the drivers are sometimes you go to the website under uh, system resources or um, maybe there's a, a user forum and they'll direct you to where the drivers are for Windows on a Macintosh um, it's a little bit easier and um, what we're going to show today is how to set up a Soundcraft signature series console I have the um, Soundcraft Signature 22 Multitrack, a hybrid console. That's what I'm going to be showing today. But this would apply to any um, uh, analog console that has a uh, digital interface built into it. Or, if you can think about it like this, if you have an analog console that you can hook into a, a secondary digital interface, that that interface would connect to your computer then the concept would be the same for me the soundcraft is 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 a dual uh, unit it has the analog console with the digital interface already built into it so uh, hence the the term hybrid it is both analog and digital in in one uh, unit all right so we are going to go to our launch pad and we are going to go into other and we're going to click on audio MIDI setup. And that's where you're going to come into your audio devices. Once you connect your, uh, let's, I'm going to say Soundcraft uh, signature console in this video because that's what we're using. But you can insert the name of your device every time I say Soundcraft signature series console. So, um, you're going to connect your signature console via USB cable into your computer. Once you connect your Soundcraft console to the uh, your, your computer via USB, it'll show up in, under your audio devices inside the audio MIDI setup. So right here you can see we have Soundcraft Signature 22 Multitrack. You're going to see all of the, um, the outputs if you're under the output tab. If you go to input, you'll see all the inputs. So right now it's showing that we have 24 mono inputs and then the outputs from it, there's 22 mono outputs. So we have 24 ins and 22 outs just as it shows here. The microphone here means that you have it set for your device to output computer audio. If this is selected, then you will be able to have the audio from your computer when you get a notification or you open an email or you get an email, you'll you'll hear it through your monitors that are connected to your Soundcraft uh, device. What you're going to want to do when you get to this point is you're going to want to go to configure speakers. And you're going to see left front and right front. This is the important thing uh, for this console. You want to configure it in stereo, and you, it depending on your system that you have hooked up, you'll you'll select here. Me, I have is just the standard stereo setup. So under left front, you're going to go down to analog 21. Under right front, you're going to go to analog 22, and then you're going to click apply. What you've done now is you have set up. Um, channel 2122 as your uh, send and, and, and receive from the
the uh, Soundcraft con- Soundcraft console to your uh, your uh, your the audio that passes through the system. You would click done once you clicked apply, and now we are all set up and ready to go into our our doll. So in this case, we are going to use Pro Tools to show the setup. All right, once you have Pro Tools open, first thing you're going to want to do um, is open up your setup and your playback engine. Now, you can open up uh, pre-existing mixes or pre-existing recording sessions that were not recorded on console and still mix the cons- still mix the session through the console. So it doesn't have to be uh, uh, something where you, when you get this, you hook it up and then everything you've done prior to uh, you getting this console is wasted. This is still your, your audio interface. So you'll still be able to do in the box mixing. It just uh, with a um, hybrid console, now you have the capability of mixing back through the console after you've recorded from it. So uh, it's a very nice feature, and I'm going to show you how to get all that set up. So first thing you do, again, you're going to go to Setup, Playback Engine. And here under Playback Engine, you're going to go to the Soundcraft Signature 22 Multitrack. And then this is just basically going to tell you right here um, the recording interface that you had uh, it doesn't match. So you're going to just going to, you want to, it's asking if you want to proceed. You just click Yes. And then you're going to select your buffer size, playback and, and, and other things here. These will are dependent upon your computer system, the power of the system, and also what you're doing. If you are mixing, I would say be at 10, 20, 1,024 samples. If you are recording, you're going to have a low buffer setting. I normally go at 128. You can go to lower sample rates uh, for your buffer if you have a, a more powerful system. All right, so for this example today, we are not gonna, I'm not going to show any recording, so I'm going to keep it at 1,024 samples. And you would click OK. And basically what now it's do, what, what it's doing is it's resetting my uh, Pro Tools session for the new interface. All right, so here we are. Our um, session has been recalibrated for the uh, Soundcraft console. So the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the I.O. settings match what we have on the console. So we're going to go set up again. And instead of going to playback engine this time, we are going to go to I.O., which is input output. And you're going to see something like this. It's going to have analog 1, 2, all the way through analog 21, 22. This is for your output. I'm going to go to the input tab first. So in input, you'll see here you've got a drop down. Again, you'll see each stereo pair on the input is made up, if you go to the drop down, of two mono uh, tracks. You've got analog 1 and then analog 2. So that makes up this stereo pair all the way down to analog 2324, which you'll notice is not on this console because we're talking about inputs. On this console, analog 2324 is your input back into the DAW or the computer for the purpose of printing any mixing that you're doing on the console. So for me, I always name this print so that for me, I know... Um, when I'm setting up a recording session or a mix a mix session in Pro Tools, when I want to uh, do create a print track, I know the, that my um, my print return back into my doll is already marked with the word print. And I, of course, that is 2324 on the on the inputs. On our outputs, we've got analog one two all the way through analog twenty one twenty two. Now you'll notice right here, there's this little speaker icon next to analog one two. That is incorrect. You are your 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 monitoring is through analog twenty one twenty two. Nine out of ten, 
audio interfaces in the world, the the monitoring setup is analog or or is their first two channels. When Soundcraft made this, they wanted you. To, they didn't want to have that kind of interference. They wanted it to be a, a, a top of the line on your signal chain to be your 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 monitoring, which is the top stereo pairs twenty one twenty two. So how you do that is under monitor path. You're gonna see you're gonna see you're gonna see it says analog one two. You just click the drop down and go analog twenty one twenty two. Uh, already. That our icon, our monitoring icon has moved to analog 2122. The audition path, what this is, is when you create um, a new track, where is that going to go? So we want that to be analog 2122. Your AFL, PFL path, same thing, analog 2122. Alright, so we've got that. Then our buses. So you can see right here, uh, you've got the names of, of a bunch of channels, and this is probably going to be from your session. And then here you're going to have mapping to output, and you'll see all of these are italicized. What that means is that they are not currently active. In other words, the device that I had previously mixed this song with is not available right now because I switched to the Soundcraft signature. So what you want to do here at this stage is you want to click on default. And what this button will do, once you click it, it will reset your buses to what is the um, default setting for the, for the Soundcraft Signature Series console. So there we are. So now we've got Analog 3.4. It's no longer italicized. And you can even see our monitoring path for Analog 21.22. It kept that. So I always name... Uh, the uh, analog 2122 as my master out. You'll see because of my session, it kept it. So what I would do is, again, this is from my previous interface. I would go analog one, two. So that's, you probably won't have to do that. So you don't have to worry about that. And what I'm going to do is analog 2122. I'm going to double click on it and I'm going to name that master out. So now the output is 2122. That is going to be where I'm going to send all of my tracks that I want to go out to my monitoring. That is where I'm going to route them, not analog 1-2. You go analog 2122. That is your output to your monitors. All right, default output bus. What I want to uh, create there is my master out, which is analog 2122. Same thing for my stereo. Output, master out. All right, so now anytime I create a track, its default output is going to be master out. So if I, I create a new track, I'm going to click OK here. If I create a new track, track new, let's say I create a, a mono audio track, master out. Uh, it already is defaulted by the selection I made in that previous window to be output directly to my main output on my console. So I don't have to worry about reconfiguring my outputs, anything like that. Anytime I create a track, it is going to go automatically to my master out. Now after that, I can route that audio wherever I need it, but I know from the very beginning of when I create a track, I'll always be able to hear the output through the console regardless of what type of instrument or input I'm putting on that track. All right. Again, I can put that anywhere I want after the fact. Go to bus, maybe go bass bus or whatever. So now that's going to the bass bus, which is going to my sub mix, which is going to, you see this is analog one, two. I'm going to reroute this to master out. So now I know that the, my audio is going to pass through my, my, my main output of the Signature Series console. All right. So and that's pretty important. So you always want to make sure that on your I.O., when you go to the, to the bus tab, that you go to default because um, the, the information that's going to be there is going to be from your previous interface.
All right. So, again, inputs, it'll be your stereo pairs. You, tw you, you open the drop down, and it's going to be made up of your mono tracks, your mono, your, 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 your mono inputs, and then your analog 2324 is your print return back into the console. So you want I always rename mine print. On the outputs, analog 2122, you want to make sure it is your monitoring path, and you can rename it master out. So there we are. We are on our bus. Everything is set up there. We are good to go. Okay. Now you can export this once you're done so that every time you use this interface, it is going to recall th this information. So I can go SIG 22 MTK. Well, yeah. SIG 22 MTK and save it. And then anytime I want to get back to here, if I switch something up, all I have to do is go to Import Settings and select my Signature 22. And here we go. Everything, everything is maintained. Just the way we set it up previously. All right. All right. Now, let's look at the console. The way that, the way that this console is set up, when you are recording, you can use any one of these, uh, these XLR or these TRS inputs. Tracks 1 through 6 have the uh, DBX limiter built into it. When it's pressed down, that means the limiter is on. When it's pressed up, the limiter is turned off. Tracks 7 and 8, not only do they have the DBX limiter on those, on those ch channels, but they also have a high Z button, which is going to allow for... Um, a, a TRS line input instruments like a, a electric bass or a guitar that you want to connect directly into the console. You just press that down and that is going to allow for the gain to be uh, increased for your low level instrument. Uh, tracks or channels 9 and 10, they are absent of the DBX limiter, but they maintain the high Z input. So I use 9 and 10 a lot. Uh, for my when I hook my bass into uh, directly in, and then the rest of the channels are uh, XLR TRS combo that you can c connect additional instruments or devices into. Uh, you can also use these as route backs for exterior uh, analog gear. Um, I've covered that in, in other videos. I don't want to get into that here today as that's a little bit more advanced. This, is, this video is just made for how to set it up. So I'm not going to get into um, advanced routing. Again, I've made videos on that. So I, I want to just cover the, the, ba the basic uh, functionality and uh, uh, how to set it up in, in your computer. So this is your channel gain. What, what this does is when you are... First, um, hooking up your your instrument or your um, your device for recording, you want to play and you want to increase your gain accordingly. You will hit the PFL button right here. You will see the red light come on right underneath the meters. It says AFL PFL active. That lets you know that you have a channel on the console that has a, a PFL button selected what this means is is, is pre-fader leveling so or listening so as you play you're going to see the meter go up and down as you increase or decrease the amount of gain that you have on uh, that channel so turning it up as you play you'll see the level go up and you want to get it to a nice healthy level um, without clipping once you are satisfied with the level you have going into that channel you are going to turn off the pfl button and you'll see the light goes off here this is very important you do not want to be working on this console with that light on because 
the PFL dis, uh, disengages the audio for the rest of the console. All right. Once you've got that set up, you'll see your EQs here. You've got a real nice four-band EQ, and then you've got these three are for your um, auxiliary sends, and then you've got effects auxiliary sends. So you've got five auxes and then two effects. Um, and those simply allow you to route audio out from any one of these. These are your five auxes right here. So you can run these out TRS into an out, any outboard gear you may have, and then, route, and then you can route them back into any, any ch one of these channels. You've got, you've got four here that you can use, or in, a, in any combination, if you want to route it back in, into one of the, these channels with uh, the DBX limiter on, you can do that as well. Once you've got all that set up, and you're satisfied with what you got going on there, you're gonna you're gonna uh, route your audio to you know make sure your master's depressed. You, th this will send your signal through your master output into the console. All right, on channel 2122, which is your return, you want to put that on zero, have that on master out, and make sure your USB return is turned is is depressed. Now that will allow the audio to pass from the console into the doll and back to channel one, channel twenty one twenty two, so you can monitor it through your monitors or your or your headphones. I know that kind of sounds complicated, but that's how the routing works. So, all right. So once we've got that all set up, you can re hit re create a new track. Analog one is would be your would be your input. Your output can be wherever you need it to go. In this case, we'll make it master out. And then you can, uh, in Pro Tools, you can hit your, the I button, which is, it, which is your input monitoring. And then you can even mute here. You don't need to monitor through your DAW. You can monitor through the console. So you can play the whole session that you've got and then track with low latency through the console. So once you've got that done, you, you've recorded your track, then you can go back now and turn, turn off your input or your, your input monitoring and your mute. And then on your output here, we're going to select analog one. So now what we're doing is we are routing our audio back into the console for mixing. And how you get the audio to play back from your computer through channel one is you have to press this USB return button. Once you push that button down, that allows for the communication via your USB cable to pass this audio that you've routed to analog one back into this channel here. So now anything I do on this channel strip will be affecting this, this signal that's being routed back to the console. Once I've made my adjustments and I'm happy with what I'm hearing, now I want to print what I have affected on the console back into the doll. So the way I do that is I go track new. I create, uh, if, if you're working in stereo or, or mono, um, we'll, de we'll determine what you do. If you want to create a, 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 an exact mono print, you'll create a mono auxiliary track. If you are mixing multiple tracks, you're going to want to create a stereo auxiliary input. And I call, I, I name this print bus or print aux or whatever you need to know that this is what you're routing your affected analog uh, console mix back into the doll with. And you hit enter or create. And here's our new print bus. The input on this track is going to be print. Now, if you didn't rename this print in the setup I.O. window, this is going to say analog 2324. This is why I rename it print before I do anything. So I click print, and then on my output, I'm going to select new track. Now, this is where you are going to create your audio track that you're going to record what you've just mixed through the console with. So you're going to have a stereo. Again, if you're doing multiple tracks and you want to have a stereo mix, you'll do stereo. If you're just uh, 
doing an analog uh, print of a mono signal, you would do, select mono here. And then you're going to select audio track, and then you're going to rename right here uh, what it is. If it's a, a bass print, you may put, put bass analog sum, if that's what you're doing there. Or maybe you just put bass print. That'll let you know that that is a print off the console of, you know, uh, the, uh, the mix you had back in your session. And, and, or if it is of your whole set, of, of your whole mix, you can just put print track. All right. So once you've got that created, again, you'll you'll on your uh, print bus and your print track, you want to solo safe them. You hold your command key down and you click the solo button on both tracks. So now we have audio that we've just recorded on channel one that we're passing back into channel one. And we've pressed the USB return button so that it is now accepting audio from the computer. The routing on the console has analog 2324 as a always active return back into our doll. So on our print bus, we are selecting that under our input. Again, I've renamed my print. If you didn't change yours, it's going to say analog 2324 here. Out of that print bus, we are going to send it to our print track, which is... Uh, uh, you can select new track here, and it'll create it for you. And then your output is going to be your master out. So this now feeds into our master output right there. You hit input monitoring, and you can hit mute. And as you hit playback, you will see your levels here go up and down. You will adjust your levels accordingly on your console to get a... Uh, a uh, a uh, stereo uh, print that is equal to the signal coming into the console. In other words, you don't want to have a, uh, a negative 10 dB uh, track going into the console and then a negative 20 dB track being printed back into your doll. You've lost 10 decibel of, uh, of, of, gain, of, le of level. So you will adjust your settings on, on, the, on your master to give you an equal print of what you are printing um, that's pretty much it from a standpoint of how to set it up how to get it uh, uh, working in your in your con uh, in your doll and um, how to make sure that there are some pitfalls that you avoid I tried to cover all that here uh, without making it an overly long video if there's anything that I covered in this video that um, you're not sure what I'm referring to, please don't hesitate. Leave a comment in the uh, uh, section below this video or email me at bbuck822 at gmail.com and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Email is probably the best because it allows me to go in depth with, with your questions and your comments um, with, without uh, there being any kind of... Um, uh, language barrier or not being able to type certain things you can tell me your what system you have you give me all your details and you can be a little bit more open and honest not worrying about what anyone else is going to say on the uh, youtube community i keep all our emails private so you don't have to worry about me divulging any information that you may not someone else to know i know that there's a there can be uh sometimes overly critical people on social media and in youtube so that's why I offer the email uh, uh, capabilities for, for you guys so that you can message me without worry of someone saying, oh, that's, that's a stupid question or oh, I can't believe you don't know how to do that. Uh, I, I get a lot of response. I get a lot of requests for videos just like this where it's saying, hey, we don't understand how to do this. Please make a, 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 a basic video that shows step-by-step. -step. So I don't mind doing step-by-step -step videos. Um, in fact, I prefer that because the, the beginner is who I'm trying to 
uh, help out here. People that have 5, 10, 15 years uh, in, the, in, in recording music, they don't necessarily need all of the tips and tricks that I'm going to be able to offer. Um, as I'm, I'm, I'm someone that's only been in it that long myself. So um, if you have, again, any questions or comments, leave them in the, in the section below. Email me. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And uh, uh, I hope everyone is having a, a wonderful holiday season. I'll talk to you guys real soon. All right? Bye-bye now.